Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ariane Albers. I'm a postdoc researcher I'm working with um, Lori on um, on the on a 2020 Horizon EU uh, project called NEGEM uh, for quantifying and deploying responsible negative emissions. And uh, today I, I would like to, to present to you our work um, to show you some preliminary results um, and particularly um, showing you the synergy of our project with the scambioscope uh, regarding the biopump concept and how we cross the borders to have a world view for inducing negative emissions. Um, so first of all, um, negative emissions as um, agreed uh, from the commission um, means that the CO there is a CO2 removal from the atmosphere to supplement emission reductions and permanently store carbon. Um, store carbon. So for instance, there are some dedicated processes that uh, you, will, uh, you will know, the, the bags or ducts, but also there are natural me mechanisms like afforestation, reforestation, soil carbon sequestration, um, biochar, et cetera. So um, the NEGEM project uh, it aims to better understand um, to, to which extent these technologies and practices they contribute to climate neutrality. And so the project is divided into two phases. And the first is to, to evaluate and then to identify the most promising technologies and practices. And also, um, Sorry. Yeah. And also, uh, and then in the second phase, um, to create a framework where we can um, we can scale up or scale uh, the, the technology and practices pathways and support the Paris Agreement targets. So it, uh, in INSA TB, uh, we focus on solar organic uh, sequestration potentials and the, from a global view and also EU view. So our overall objective is uh, we want to develop the biopump as a negative emission practice uh, and then therefore identify target areas, uh, many on marginal land use. And then with the help of uh, key performance indicators, uh, we want to evaluate uh, this, uh, the most promising biopump as negative emission strategy um, for a uh, to assess the impacts on a large scale deployment, um, for instance, regarding the environmental performance that we will do with life cycle assessment, uh, and then also some socioeconomic factors or trade offs, uh, and then to extrapolate our results so that uh, we can make sure that we don't cross the planetary boundaries. So today I present, uh, I will give you the, some overview of our first, uh, first objective. And uh, first of all, we have what the biopomp, and Sue already he, he introduced to this concept. So it is, uh, it, it refers to any kind of plant that has a high soil carbon sequestration potential and can be grown on marginal land, but also has an economic use as a feedstock to the bioeconomy. And it can uh, also uh, have a carbon storage, uh, for instance, in bio-based products, uh, in, uh, temporarily and eventually also postpone the, the emissions. And uh, for marginal land, there are so many different understandings and definitions what are marginal land. And after a deep re a literature review, uh, we defined marginal land as uh, where is original culture land or uh, non-agricultural land, including perennial urban areas, um, which are currently unused or underutilized because of several environmental, economic and social limitations, but also because of induced uh, human-induced degradation or soil problems, there's a biophysical limitations. Uh, but uh, anyway, this land uh, represents a potential suita uh, suitability for sustainable biomass production, temporarily in the long term, to increase carbon in the soil or also throughout the bioeconomy. And the sustainable uh, emphasizes on the that it does not imply any negative um, negative impact on the current market, and for instance, the food security, and also doesn't affect other people's livelihoods. So um, our strategy for clustering this target air for biopumps. So first we did the pre-selection. So we cross-referenced uh, land cover in SOX stocks. Um, 
um, to identify over marginal lands. But then also from our definition, we have um, we also included the, the, the land that was originally agriculture, but has eventually undergone a land use change to a lesser land use, when land, lesser, I mean, non-food, non that is non-food anymore. Uh, and uh, therefore we compared, uh, we made a comparison, a multi-year com land cover comparison to the draft abandoned agricultural lands. And so from this, uh, we can have our marginal lands, or identify our marginal land, then uh, subtract the biophysical constraints as well as these protected areas and derive our target areas. Um, and um, so we, we can develop a baseline per archetype, for instance, the climate uh, soil type, land use type, and then to identify the suitability of the biopumps uh, to the target of the target areas. Um, we um, yeah, we have to, to, to analyze this. And then uh, the, the, the suitability, then we will do uh, future projections and compare business as usual scenarios with the implementation uh, of biopumps and then do SOC, uh, soil organic carbon simulations to see whether they contribute to increasing the SOC stocks and then uh, do a final archetype clustering. So first of all, what I can show you here is an, uh, we identified uh, the sea vulnerable soils uh, which are um, up to uh, 30 degrees of carbon per hectare. We included also up to 50 uh, for, to see whether there is a larger difference and whether we can use it also later for sensitivity. Um, and for the land cover, uh, we use the current land cover from 2018 with the FAO land cover classification system that has 20, 20, 22 classes. And uh, so first we have, uh, we select, we, we excluded, for instance, the tree cover as it is um, it addressed by other partners, but then uh, also we excluded lynches, wetland and urban areas, for instance, on water bodies. So we only, for now, we include the bare areas and sparse vegetation. And then for the abandoned land or the comparison uh, with the previous year from 2010, um, we, we compare from croplands to any shrubland, land, natural grassland, or mosaic where it's not the tree, tree cover is not dom dominant, for instance. So here you can see uh, how uh, were, were the preliminary target regarding sparse vegetation bare areas. And um, when we do the multi-year comparison with the year land cover of 2010, we actually, um, we're sad to see that there is, uh, well, there, there was, not sad, but uh, that there's not many uh, abandoned land available, let's say, for biopumps. So if you see this, uh, it's very hard to see in the whole group, but we, we, we zoom in, for instance, and we can show you that there is some abandonment in the Germany-Denmark border, so also in the Poland-Kaliningrad border, or in the central California, in uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan border, or uh, Mali, Mauritania, and then also in the northeastern Algeria. So these are our identified marginal lands, but we have not yet uh, considered, uh, well, we also consider the, the protected land areas that where we cannot grow, so we have to subtract this. And at the end, uh, by subtracting this, we, we can see here the, the, uh, where, where this eventually the availability of land uh, regarding we focus on the 30 uh, socks of, uh, tons of soil carbon per hectare and uh, maybe later also 50. And uh, yeah, so, and then if you also take into account all the biophysical constraints, you see from the World Harmonized Soil Database, uh, based on some criteria you can define, for instance, criteria like whether the, there is uh, land that is very, um, acid or um, alkaline or it's, uh, there's a lot of sand or there's a poor except it's doing ash. So based on this criteria, you can identify whether there is a suitability or unsuitable land. And when we will subtract also the unsuitable land, we have uh, here our first uh, um, yeah, uh, marginal land availability, which is uh, fortunately um, not as much as we uh, hoped for, but uh, still we will go and see how how we uh, um, how we can with the bio pump contribute to soil organic carbon sequestration in these areas. Uh, and then we need to arch to um, archetype uh, with um, also show uh, dividing or 
so, um, how do you say? Uh, yeah, selecting the, the areas by the climate zone and also look a bit into the climate constraints. So this was for the target areas, but uh, still uh, for to identify the suitability to the biopumps, we have to evaluate to do an evaluation of biopumps. And we did uh, similar as Sue, the, his approach uh, using a semi-quantitative multi-criteria scoring ranking approach. So we use a five step, risk A, score, weight, normalize and rank. So I'm going to be more detailed on this. And in the second phase, we are going to, after we do a pre-selection, we're going to look into uh, how are the, uh, yeah, the regional adaptability of these pumps uh, specific to the target areas. So here you can see an overview of the multi criteria analysis. I'm just very quickly to introduce or show you which criteria we considered. For instance, uh, we consider the soft changes uh, in the topsoil and subsoil, and uh, the, from transformations from annual crop, grassland, fallow, and short rotation copies to perennials, uh, and also calculated uh, the values uh, per tropical, subtropical temperate climate zone. Uh, we also considered soft stock potentials from literature, but this is more on, the, on a qualitative basis. Then um, the below ground carbon in the root parts, um, as well as uh, marginal land, uh, some uh, biotic stock tolerances that we could retrieve from another EU project that has done a detailed analysis of, of 68 crops regarding their adaptability on marginal lands. So for now, this is only qualitative. And then also, of course, the, the economic yields uh, by economy. So we scored our um, from four to from zero to four, from very low to very high. And then for the quantitative values, we rescaled with a min max scalar uh, so that we have a zero to, uh, well, we can uh, assign the, the, the rescale values to the score. And uh, well, so this is our preliminary selection of the bio pumps. And uh, once we have weighted, uh, we've weighted the values. We use the normalization scope so that we can show the distribution of the bio pumps. Bio pumps. And uh, so we rank them by subdividing values up to one half of one standard deviation. And, uh, and the more further away, so we include all, all the, the, all the bio pumps that are within the mean. Um, and then the more far away uh, from the mean, the, the better are the, the bio pumps. And all below the mean are excluded. So we had uh, initially 159 uh, biopombs. Uh, we excluded some, like uh, those related to forestry, for instance, then we had 155. And with this, five, this, uh, this first pre-selection, we have about 72. And then we have to see their regional habitability. And there is where we really quantify then uh, the biopombs regarding the cl climate uh, criteria, soil criteria, and terra. But also, as Sue uh, also involved in his study, the agronomic uh, criteria like uh, the use of nutrients and the water efficiencies and so on. So it's um, so at the end, um, we hope, uh, yeah, we will see which biopomp were to. Uh, implement and um, so are you excited to find out? Uh, please follow our, our 